This is how to solo complete the main easter egg on the Cold War Zombies map Mauer der Toten. The first thing you'll need to do is turn on power and activate Pack-a-Punch. This can easily be done by following the indicated hints on screen. Next, we're going to build Klaus. To do this, you'll need to collect two parts. The one I'm going to start with are the robotic hands. To get this part, you'll actually need the brain rot ammo type. Once you've got that, head over to the hotel room 305 in the Korber building, just down the hall from where you zipline from spawn, and try to turn a zombie near this door so it tears down the barricades. After that, you'll then be able to enter the room and collect the part from around the corpse's neck. Now for the last one, all you have to do is wait for a panzer to spawn in on about round 10 and then kill it. The panzer should drop a battery for you to collect. With those two parts, make your way to the safe house area in the maintenance tunnels and interact with Klaus to place them. Klaus will then stand up and you should be able to use a remote control to command him. Next, what you have to do is come over to this locker in the switch control room and then command Klaus in front of it so he punches the locker open. Next, we're going to work on getting a free Cerberus. If you've already gotten one from either the mystery box or by completing trials, you can go ahead and skip to the next step. So anyway, using that black light, you must now find the combination to a locked safe. You do this by shining the black light on the walls in specific areas to reveal a glowing set of numbers. The first area you'll need to search is the top floor garment factory of the Korber building. All of these numbers have three possible spawn locations. The second one will be near the service passage area, which is just below where you drop down from the street. Again, here are the three locations. And finally, the third area is up on the street in the grocery store. You'll want to take note of these numbers in order from one to three, so these will be the last in your combination. Now with that combination, head back over over to the hotel room 305 and input those into the safe. If you follow the directions on screen, you should be able to turn each dial left or right to correctly position them to input the numbers you got. If done correctly, you should be able to open the safe and retrieve the free Cerberus. Now we're going to collect three parts to build Klaus's headgear for later on. The first part can be found on the roof of spawn. With the Cerberus, all you have to do is shoot this radio tower and it'll drop down for you to collect. Next, from that same building, rappel down to the electronics store area and shoot these three radios. The part will randomly spawn in one of them. And finally, head down to the ghost station area across from Mule Kick and shoot this metal box. Once you've collected all three parts, you can craft the headgear onto Klaus in the safe house. At this time, I would also recommend upgrading Klaus to the first tier. To start that, head over to either of the two death strip areas and interact with the numerous debris piles around the watchtowers. You should eventually get a microwave dish from one of them. From there, head to the garment factory area in the Korber building and interact with this upgrade station to place the dish. You now need to call in Klaus Klaus and allow him to get roughly 20 to 30 kills. An easy way to know if he's gotten the correct amount is by looking at the top right screen on the upgrade station. It'll light up green when it's ready. Once it is, go ahead and command Klaus in front of the station so he steps into it. You'll then need to defend him for about a minute. Once the process is complete, Klaus will step out of the upgrade station and he will now be upgraded to the first tier. So moving on, go ahead and call in Klaus, then command him in front of this brick wall in the sewer access area. He will eventually punch through the wall, revealing another metal one. To get through that, you'll need the laser variant of the Cerberus. All you have to do is shoot the wall until it melts away. Inside will be a hidden lab with two items protected by barriers. To remove these barriers, you must flip to the next round. Once they're gone, go ahead and wait for these three canisters to rise from the center conversion unit and then collect them. Then head over to the other machine and shoot it with your Cerberus. This will allow you to collect an essence trap from inside. Next, you must find three essence harvesters. So far, these have a total of seven possible spawn locations. The first one can be found along this wall in the sewer access area. The second one is in the ghost station area across from Mule Kick. The third one is just outside of the bar where Jug is. The fourth is next to a dumpster in the alley of the Korber building. The fifth one is on the rooftop of the Korber building, opposite of Speed Cola. The sixth one can be found at the back of the destroyed penthouse across the street. And finally, the last one is sitting outside this little shack in the West Berlin Street area. Once you've found one of your three locations, go ahead and interact with it to place the canister. After that, you must then throw down the essence trap you collected. Doing this will spawn three tempests. What you have to do is kill these tempests in range of the harvester so their souls are collected. They don't need to be extremely close for this, but they can't be too far either. Once you've got all three, the harvester will glow purple. From there, you must take back the canister, then walk it all the way down to the lab again. You won't be able to sprint during this, but you will be able to mantle, which makes things a little easier. After placing the canister back into the conversion unit, you'll then need to repeat everything you just did for the remaining two canisters. You should be able to collect another essence trap, but if not, 
spot, try flipping to the next round. Anyway, once all three canisters have been filled and returned, you'll then need to collect a warhead and key card. To get those, you'll need Klaus to be upgraded to the first tier, which you should already have done. So go ahead and call him in, then interact with this switch in the switch control room. From there, head out to the tracks and command Klaus in the center of the tracks furthest from Yulkit. This will cause Klaus to stop an incoming train just long enough for you to enter it. Make your way to the center of the train and collect the warhead on your right, then turn around and collect the key card behind you under this corpse's hand. Make sure you collect the actual key card and not a piece of intel which is also on the corpse. After that, place the warhead into the conversion unit in the lab, then use the key card to browse files on this computer in the safe house. You'll be able to do this a few times until it allows you to activate a satellite. I would recommend doing this at the end of a round. Once you're ready, activate that satellite, then head back up to the streets to see where it fires. This is going to spawn a whole bunch of zombies, mimics, and heavy megatons for you to kill. Once you split the megaton and then kill its two halves, each one will drop a piece of uranium. Now you'll only have a total of 5 minutes to complete this next step. If you fail to do this before that time runs out, your game will end. So as soon as you pick up one of these rocks, immediately sprint over to the military tent in the East Berlin streets area because it will slowly start to damage you. At that tent, you'll be able to craft the rock into a device. From there, pick the device up, then repel to the top of the spawn building and zipline over to the hotel. Now make your way to the Korber building zipline and place the device there. All that's left is to head back down to the street, collect the remaining rock and craft it into a device, then place it on the opposite end of that same zipline in the destroyed penthouse. When you do this, the two devices should rocket forward and crash to the streets below. This will end your timer. Now head back down to collect that cleansed rock and deliver it to the conversion unit in the lab. Next, you'll need to do that whole process one more time. You should now be able to use one of the computers in the military tents to call in the satellite, which will fire in a different location. I would recommend using the workbench in the same tent as before, since it's closest to the destroyed penthouse zipline, which is the only one this will work on. Anyway, once you deliver that final cleansed rock, the boss fight will begin. So before you do, I would recommend to just drop the rock and then get yourself ready. You'll want to have full armor, all of your perks, your Cerberus upgraded as high as you can, a death machine, and maybe some equipment. Once you think you're ready, go ahead and place the rock into the conversion unit. This boss fight will consist of five stages, and the boss, Valentina, has three main attacks. The first one to look out for is when she spawns a bunch of fire above her head. When she does this, she'll then strike you with fire spikes that won't deal damage to your health, but to your armor. But keep in mind, once your armor is gone, then these will damage you. These can be avoided by simply hiding from them. The second attack is when she spawns a whole bunch of zombies around her to regain health. To stop this, all you have to do is quickly kill the floating zombies. And finally, the biggest attack she has is a wipe mechanic. When your screen starts to turn blue and wispy, you need to try and quickly get out of sight from Valentina. Hiding behind an object or under something should do the trick. Okay, so now that you know what to expect, here's how I completed the boss fight. As soon as it started, I used my Cerberus to destroy her shield. Then I popped a ring of fire and used a death machine to quickly damage her. The ring of fire will protect you from her projectiles as well, but just be sure not to let the zombies down you. This will quickly complete the first stage, for which she will then fly off to the next one. Now you have roughly about 45 seconds to a minute to set yourself back up. I would quickly buy more armor and a new death machine so you have one with max ammo. You will have to get rid of your current death machine first though. After some time, Valentina will then teleport you back to her to start the next stage. This time around, I just focused on the zombies to build up another ring of fire. Once it was ready, again I destroyed her shield, then used the death machine. Soon after that, she jumped off to the next stage. So that's pretty much what I did for the next three stages. If you happen to run out of death machine ammo before you can damage her enough, just try and lay as many shots into her as you can with your Cerberus. Also, don't forget to armor up and get a new death machine between stages. Once you complete the final stage back at the lab, you will have defeated Valentina. But you're not done yet. Now you must escort Klaus into the portal with the warhead. All you have to do is protect him from the bomber zombies so they don't damage him. If done successfully, he will enter the portal and the cutscene will begin to play. Well, that's pretty much it for the video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.